I put together a previous video that looked at the difference between arithmetic average returns, geometric or time weighted returns, and dollar weighted returns. And that was more just a general conceptual video. I did go through an example, but here I want to walk through a real world example. And so I've collected some returns for Walmart, IBM, Citigroup, and the S&P 500. Those date back to 1993. And the reason for that starting point is that's as far back as I've got monthly data for the S&P 500 exchange traded fund. It also gives us plenty of data there as we've got about 25 plus years of returns to look at. These are monthly returns. So you can see in that first month, both Walmart and IBM had the exact same negative 2.31% return. Citigroup, on the other hand, had a very high 26% return. And the S&P 500 had a 1.76% return. And again, these are the actual returns by month for each of these companies. Now, another thing I did in order to calculate the dollar weighted returns, those are going to be dependent on how much you start with and how much you add each time. So I set this spreadsheet up so you could change that, but my default is going to be $10,000 initial investment and $250 added at the end of each month. Note that $250 added at the end of each month totals out to be $3,000 a year. It's just spread throughout the year instead of coming all at once. So if you look at this value formula up here, you will see that starts with the 10,000 times one plus the return and then adds in the $250. If I go to the second month, you'll see that starts with the previous value times one plus the return and then adds in another $250. And that just continues all the way down for each of Walmart, IBM, Citigroup, and the S&P 500 exchange traded fund. Here I've got a column to calculate the geometric mean and the column for value. Now remember the geometric mean just takes one plus the return. So we have a negative 2% return. One plus that gives us 97.69%. We have a negative 15% return, one plus that gives us 84.33, and so on down the list. Now as we scroll down, you'll see down here I've got kind of the results. These are the default values. So if you look, 480,000, almost 480,500 and Walmart accumulated through that time period. IBM, very similar, 477,130. Citigroup, not near as good, and that's because Citigroup got hit during the financial crisis of 2008, 2009, and that really destroyed their long run returns. And the S&P 500, about 419,000. If I look at the arithmetic average return, now even though Walmart actually is better than IBM. You'll see IBM had a slightly higher arithmetic average, a slightly higher geometric average, but Walmart had a slightly higher dollar weighted average. And that's just because of the timing of the returns. Walmart actually had a little bit higher returns near the end of the time horizon as opposed to the beginning. And so that kind of boosted their returns. These are monthly. Here I annualize them because most people are more familiar with annual returns. So I move those to an annual basis. You can see the geometric average return makes it look like IBM did quite a bit better, almost, what, 2.7% better than Walmart. But in reality, Walmart slightly, and it's very marginal, but Walmart slightly outperformed IBM. If we look at an arithmetic average, Citigroup is actually not that far behind Walmart. When we move it to a geometric average, 
there's a huge difference. And that's because Citigroup has huge spikes in volatility. Let me jump back to 2008, 2009. And you can see, for example, Citigroup lost 47% this month, lost 57%, had a 68% return, 57% return, negative 39% return. This period during the financial crisis was very dramatic for Citigroup. If we look over here to IBM and Walmart, we see these swings are much, much smaller for those companies. And the more volatility you have, the bigger the differential you're going to see between the geometric average and the arithmetic average. The dollar weighted return for Citigroup was also destroyed by that situation. Again, let's jump back up to that 2008-2009 time period. If we look in, let's see, this is April 2018. Citigroup and Walmart were not that far apart. And if you look, Citigroup actually had accumulated more wealth than the S&P 500. However, Fast forward to the end of February, and now Citigroup has lost almost all of that value. It just got wiped out during the financial crisis. Now, the S&P dropped quite a bit during that time period too, but the S&P dropped by less than 50%. If I look over here at Walmart, they had maybe a, a 10% hit, 10, 15% hit. If I look at IBM, well, they were a lot higher to start with, and they did get hit, but again, not near as bad. It was well under a 50% hit, probably about a 40% drop. So Citigroup, as part of the financial sector, really got hit during that financial crisis. So again, this is designed to give you a look at real-world numbers and the difference between dollar weighted averages for three different stocks and the S&P 500. Now, I wanna do a couple other things real quick here. One thing I want to do is say, what happens if I change the monthly contribution? So that is currently 250. Let's just scroll down here again to the bottom and note that my dollar weighted return for Walmart, it's 9.85%. For Citigroup, it's 0.53%. I change this to 350. And go down. Notice those numbers change a little bit. Not dramatically, but they do change a little bit due to the different dollar values that are being plugged in. So the initial wealth and the monthly contributions, what if I started with, say, 50,000 here for my initial wealth? Now going down, again, these numbers are very different when we see that. So our starting values, our contributions are going to change the results on these returns over time. Let me bounce these back to 10,000 and 250. And now what I want to do is say, you know, this is how reality worked out during the sample period. But remember, stock returns have a lot of noise in them. So we don't have to see this pattern of returns play out. It could be different. So what I'm going to do here is change this column to a random variable equals R-A-N-D parentheses, and that just sets that up to be a random number between 0 and 1. And now I'm going to drag this down. So now I have a bunch of random variables. I'm going to highlight all my returns. Now I'm going to do a data sort, and I want to sort on that random variable move it from smallest to largest. Now before I do this, take a quick look. Citigroup has a 0.53% annualized return. 
and Walmart 9.85. Let me just go ahead and write. Uh, let me go ahead and cancel this real quick. I want to write these down so we have a reference point. That was 0.53% there. And this was 9.85% for Walmart. And let me go ahead and just write these all down. So 9.12% for the S&P and 9.82% for IBM. Now what I want to do is sort these by the random return now look my returns look at the difference in Citigroup by changing the sequence of those returns the returns didn't change my arithmetic and geometric averages were the same but now I actually averaged 10.95%. Citigroup was my best performing stock just by randomly changing those. Now I'm gonna resort this and I can do this because this random number changes all the time. So all I have to do is resort. Wow, now Citigroup, negative 10.32%. Walmart, only 3.69%. The S&P 500 only had a 3% return. Changing the sequence of returns is huge and can really have a big impact on our dollar weighted returns. Remember, as an investor, your dollar weighted return is what is important to you. That's telling you how much you're actually getting over that time period. Now, when I do this, I'm assuming that returns are uncorrelated from month to month. What we find in practice is there are some correlations due to economic cycles. They're very difficult to predict ahead of time. But what I'm saying is that the actual returns we're getting here are probably not going to be 100% lined up with what we can visualize, but that this gives you an idea of how much dollar weighted returns are sensitive to the sequence of returns, not just the value of returns annualized arithmetic average, annualized geometric average, those returns are not changing. What's changing is the dollar weighted returns and those are changing rather dramatically in some cases. So I'm going to wrap up the video here and hope you've got a little more information now on the difference between arithmetic average returns, geometric average returns, and dollar weighted returns as they apply in real world scenarios with actual companies. Thank you.